What's up guys, welcome to another My Motion Graphics tutorial. My name is Gustavo Maia and today we're going to be learning how to create a chain. And uh, we're going to learn as well how to animate a chain using dynamics. So uh, let's stop with the chip chat and let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's get started with some torus objects. So go ahead into your objects and create a torus. All right, let's move into our top view. Great, make sure you have your display set to something like constant shading lines and wireframe. This last part is kind of important. Okay, let's um, edit this torus. I would say let's decrease the segments, not increase, decrease the segments and uh, you should choose uh, a small value over here it really depends on how close you are to the object and this means that uh, if you have a big value or your object will look fairly rounded you know but if you are really far away from your object and if your object is supposed to appear way back on your field uh, you don't need this uh, amount of segments so 20 segments for example would work great or even less than that let's just try 10 and uh, no 10 is not enough but you know it really depends on how far you are from the camera um, how far your object is from the camera sorry um, I want this to be with uh, less geometry or not that much geometry because um, the more geometry you add, the more calculations your software will have to do, so the more time your dynamics will have to, or will take to make all that calculations in the background and so on. So let's make this fairly rounded, but not too heavy. I would say something around 30 looks pretty decent. Let's increase our radius a bit, like so. And I want to make like a fat chain. All right. And I didn't choose 30 by random. I want this segment over here to be parallel to the floor, all right? Um, sorry, I keep changing my views all the time. Anyway, we have this set. We can change our um, pipe segments as well. This probably is too much. Let's just reduce this a little bit to around, I would say, uh, 12 or something. And we're going to stick with this. This is a tutorial, so what the heck. Anyways, uh, let's make this object, object editable. So go around over here and press this little button or just press C on your keyboard. Now let's set our mode to points so we can see every single vertex over here and let's choose our um, knife tool over here. Knife. Make sure your visible only is unchecked. This is important. And uh, to have a little help let's uh, check this and check this over here make sure your snapping is on and okay now let's create a sh with shift hold drag and drop from the top to the bottom in the middle okay let's select our rectangle selection and make sure in your attributes your rectangle selection is set to uh, not only select visible elements so uncheck this unchecked only select visible elements so that we can select half of it over here and leave these vertexes in the middle alone okay make sure in your perspective view you've made the right selection okay everything looks uh, really good perfect and now let's just delete this part okay let's create some uh, symmetry so go over here choose symmetry bring your torus inside the symmetry and let's uh, rename this symmetry to something like chain piece that was a joke sorry chain piece <laughs> I'm so funny today okay 
Now with our rectangle selection, let's click and drag and select all of the vertices, all of the points, except for those that sit on this axis right here. So that we can just pull this to our right and make what looks like a chain piece. I don't know if chain piece is the actual name that you should give to this thing, but anyway. Um, by the way, there's a little hole over here that I can see. There's no problem if you get this, just have to increase your tolerance on your <coughs> sorry, on your uh, symmetry. So just increase this until you have your chain piece. <laughs> I always feel like laughing when I say this word. Anyway, and it looks good. Great, now let's create a random effector. Sorry, not a random effector, a cloner. Okay, so we have a cloner, we have our chain piece, we're going to create, we're going to click and drag our chain piece into our cloner. And let's call this chain. Okay, no more piece uh, jokes. Anyway, we do have our chain, but it doesn't look really famous, it doesn't look really good. We need to create a spline, and this spline will act as our path that will define the shape of our chain. Okay, so let's go in our front view, let's select a, some kind of, uh, I would say, Bezier for example. So I'm going to create a spline like so. Maybe like this. Oh, okay. You can edit your spline if you wish. Just click and drag on the points. But it looks fairly decent. I don't want to make small uh, curves over here or there because I want the chain to have a specific path that you know kind of works with all the objects in the chain. Small things over here and there will make your chain look you know overlapping and not very good. Okay, now how to tell the cloner to follow our um, shape over here, our spline? No problem. Make sure your chain object is selected. Go into MoGraph, uh, Effector, and choose Spline. Okay. Now let's rename this spline to something like Path. Okay. Select your spline effector and click and drag the path or the spline you just created into your spline uh, space over here. Okay. Now we do have three clones in our spline. We need some more, so select your cloner object and increase the count. I don't want, I don't know, but I feel like laughing when I say count. Anyway, just increase the count a little bit and you can see that our uh, chain objects over here are not correctly aligned, so let's make something to that. And for that, we'll need to... Um, where is that? Here in parameter in rotation, let's rotate this a bit. If this doesn't work to you, just try something else, like some the, the, the P or the B or something. I never know which one it is, I just try randomly. Let's rotate everything 90 degrees, okay. And now, as you can see, we have some overlapping geometry. Let me show you this on the this perspective view. Okay, we have some overlapping geometry, and this is not great. We can, one, increase the spline, this spline, increase its size, or two, for example, we can just reduce the count, okay? And this looks fairly reasonable for now. All right, now we need to make our objects over here, our clones, to rotate, we need to make them rotate 90 degrees, each one of them. So for that, we're going to create another effector and make sure your chain of your chain um sorry your cloner is selected and select or create a step okay now we do have a step effector and this step effector is making changes to our size to the size of our clones and we don't want that so make sure you have you have your step selected and uh, uncheck in uh, effector or sorry in parameter uncheck scale just push this a little bit okay bring this a little bit okay and check rotation now 
let's uh, if I rotate one of these I'm sure this is not it again I never know which one it is so if I rotate this my object kind of looks a little bit more like a chain but you can see that this rotation does not affect that much the beginning it will affect eventually but not as we want we want a linear uh, rotation from clone to clone so um, to do that we're going to um, going to the effector tab and right click on our spline and make um, select the spline preset to linear okay now we have a linear rotation and we can come over here and just increase our rotation now I could go over here and try to select something that looks fairly reasonable which is something like this and it looks it looks pretty decent or I can make this mathematically and it kinda looks or it kinda sounds a little bit um, awkward anyway think about it you have 13 uh, clones and you want each clone to rotate 90 degrees so all you have to do is go into your step effector and uh, make 90 degrees times 13 and yeah that's it we have perfectly 90 degrees um, clones so this clone has 90 degrees of difference from this one and so on and so forth okay we have our chain and that's up for this first part now if you want to learn how to make these chains uh, move dynamically and have some uh, bit of interest in animation go ahead and check part two of this tutorial until then bye bye